are honored today to have our own Larry Cheney here. He is a horse whisperer, gentler. We're going to learn some new vocabulary today. Professionally, he is an animal nutritionist in ranches and feedlots education. And he has degrees from the University of Nevada, University of Idaho, and the University of California, Davis. He has been married to his lovely wife, Kay, for 48 years. I think that deserves a applause. <laughs> they have three children, one of whom is a veterinarian, so it runs in the family. And they have six grandchildren. They have retired to Green Valley, and they are members here at Risen Safe. I present to you Larry Cheney. Uh, as some of you may know, or may not know, uh, I am a little bit, and I hope a lot, gentle type person. And I also believe in handling animals, and specifically horses, the gentle way. Now this hasn't been done for centuries. For centuries they've done it the brutal way. And our goal as horse gentlers, there's about 15 of us in the United States, our goal is to provide a better place for the horse. Okay? That's our whole goal. And so what my mentor has done is studied the wild horses out in Nevada and Oregon, and he studied them in their natural environment. What would they do if nobody was there? Nobody touched them. You know, how would they act? How would they develop a herd instinct? How would they move? How would they talk to each other? How would they use their bodies, their language? And it's a language that we have coined the term equus, the language equus. And that means horse. So what we do, basically, is pay attention to what the horse tells us. Okay, once you've learned their language, now you're on their wavelength. And you're not trying to impose your will on the horses, okay? You have individual horses that you're working with, but for centuries they've imposed their will on the horse and put them in a subservient position. And those horses almost lived in fear, total fear. Well, our 100% of our objective is to remove fear from these animals. Totally remove fear. They're a four-legged animal, they're a flight animal. Their only defense mechanism is to run away, okay? When they run away, that's safety for them. Now, the human being is considered to be a fight animal. They will stand their ground. They will exhibit behaviors that will defend themselves, but not purely based on hunger or their own safety. So what we're trying to do with these animals, these horses, is to remove fear, as I said. Totally remove fear. And it is amazing how you can do this. And you will see it in the animal's eyes. You will see it in the attitude in their face. You will see it in generally how they respond to you being around them. Believe it or not, some of these horses that have just come in off the range and were doing nothing but defending themselves and finding their place in the pecking order in the herd, they're actually wanting to be with you. In 15 minutes, these horses want to be with you. They want to follow you around. They want to nuzzle you. They want to treat you, it seems like, a surrogate mother or something. 
And I'm talking horses that are used to defending themselves with their legs, no speed. First, I want to introduce you to the equipment that I use, and I hope you realize that it's all to get my communication to the horse about doing what they can do naturally in the pasture, but when I'd like them to do it. Okay? That's the only difference. I'm trying to communicate with them to the point that now we are together in this whole deal, and we're going to make this a really good deal. Okay? For both of the equipment needed, two 30-foot long lines. Okay? 30-foot long lines right there. We'll use those a little later. Uh, one lariat, 30 feet long. Lariat, of course, we don't roll them and do anything like that, but I'll show you later what, how we use that. Uh, one saddle. I have a collection of saddles, and this is probably my, my uh, most used saddle because it fits my carrier right. <laughs> so that's why it's used every day. One saddle pad. These are the new kind of saddle pads that have both uh, the air cushion in them, inside of them. The air cushion like this makes it very, very gentle on the horse. And then a pad on the outside. I have a typical halter. With a 15, uh, 12 to 15 foot lead rope. It's very essential that you have these kinds of things. The lead rope. That's a typical snaffle bed. That's called a D ring snaffle. It's like they use in racehorses. But it's very gentle. And I'll introduce it to that later. So that's basically the equipment. In order for a method like what we're talking about to be valid, it has to have three qualities. It has to be predictable. So I'm going to be able to tell you what I hope will happen with this horse. It's going to be discernible. We're going to be able to interpret what he's doing by pictures that we're taking along the process. And of course, it's got to be effective. It's got to be effective. And this effectiveness uh, relates to me as a two-legged person being able to transfer this two-legged person, four-legged relationship over back to the owner. So that's a very important part of the puzzle. So it's got to be effective. I'm predicting now that we can get this four-year-old quarter horse gilding, that you'll see in a minute, to join up, follow up, and to accept saddle, halter, bridle, and rider. And here's the kicker. This is an animal that came out of the wild, right? Well, it's a 640 acre pasture with these other horses. So we've got the equipment, and we're going to turn the horse loose. We gathered him out of this pasture, this large pasture, and now we've turned him into the round pen. And by the way, my able photographer is sitting right over here. Marcia Schoenberg. She takes all these pictures. And Marcia is going to be taking pictures. I'm going to do another presentation on what makes coat color in the horses. And she's going to help me take some very good pictures. I'll be able to turn this animal loose in this 50-foot crown pen. And I'll put my eyes on his eyes. In the language of Equus, that means stay away. Stay away. That's just like the maternal uh, mare in a herd of wild mustangs will put her eyes on the young stud trying to come into the herd, and she'll keep him away. Keep him away. Well, now I'm doing the same thing with this new animal that I'm really exposed to, exposed to. And hopefully we can develop a relationship. You see, my eyes on his eyes, his eyes, and his ears are right on me, right? They're focused right on me. This is all part of the relationship we're going to start right here. Now, when I'm running around the pen, let him run around a couple times with my eyes on his eyes, then I'll stop him 
by taking my eyes to the ground and then I'll circle him the other way for a couple rounds. And then when he decides he's had enough of this running around the pen not accomplishing anything, uh, he's going to start looking at me. He's going to start focusing on me. When he does that, I'm going to put my eyes on the ground and turn a 45 to him. And that is, in the language of Equus, <clears throat> you are welcome, you are welcome to come to me. Now you can come to me. And hopefully we can achieve the moment of enjoyment. And that's the magical moment we're after. Larry, can I, can I ask, is this horse completely green, no training before at all, or, or what's the... Never been touched. Never been touched. No, okay. we just ran him out the pasture. Yeah. Ran him into a corral out there in the pasture. Just sort of block him in, block him in, block him in until you can get a little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we sort him off, put him in the trailer, the old way, and the little museum. Anyway, now he's here. My eyes are going to go on the ground. And that's an invitation. Okay? So I'm inviting him to come to me now. Hopefully in this predictability thing, he'll start lowering his head. When he lowers his head, then it says, okay, I'll join with you, and maybe I'll even let you chair this meeting. We're gonna have a meeting. I can see that coming. He'll start coming toward me, and there's a lowering of the head. Okay, that's submission. That means submission. I'm okay because you haven't heard me you're not a predator. When he comes in, he'll come all the way in and call the moment of join up is when he nuzzles your shoulder. He'll nuzzle your shoulder just like his mother did when he was a baby. And they do not forget. So you never pat a horse, you only stroke him just like the mother did. Okay? So we're doing this, and then I'm going to reach up. Normally, I don't have got this picture, but normally I reach up with a closed fist. But a, a closed fist, in the language of Equus, is friendship. I'm okay. You're okay. And open, and open means, that means predator. Okay? That means mountain lion. That means wild dog. That's a predator. But this, that's, that's just friendship. Now I'm going to move into the sensitizing process. You've got to sensitize these animals to your touch. Now, by the way, all the time I am talking. I am I'm talking so he's familiar with my voice. And if he up, gets upset or moves off, I never change the level or the tone of my voice. Never. It's always the and he can relate to that as being secure and safe. I'll start at the top of the head. Now remember, there's nothing on his head. Nobody's restraining him or any way. He's decided he's going to stay there until something bad happens. Hopefully that never does. And I'm going to start at the top of his neck. I'm going to work my both hands. I'm going to work my hands all the way underneath where the dogs go up above where the mountain lions go on the neck. You know, you've seen pictures of that probably. And I'll work my way back. Always talking to him. And then whenever I move from one side to the other, I'll stroke him right between his eyes. Stroke, just stroke him real nice and gentle. He's a little antsy still at this stage. You want to come over the top of his eyes with your hands over the top of the other eye with your hand. And that is quiet to them. They just know. They just think that's grace that they ever have. I'm working my way now to the back. And I'll keep one hand, so I always maintain contact with the horse. I'll keep one hand there, and I'll come back, and I'll reach for his hock, which is comparable to our elbow. And I'll rub that hock. And that's asking him to calm, to be calm with me touching his, you know, his quarters in the rear. Remember now, this animal's only defense is his 
legs and his ability to get away. The next thing I'm going to do, which is somewhat foreign to animals, is ask for his feet. I'm going to say, I would like you to give me one of your feet. And when you do that, you don't pull it up. He weighs 1,100 pounds. I weigh 190. You don't force him to do anything. Reach down, and right there by the hog, right by the, the lower there, you reach down, and you squeeze right there, which is the blood flow to the, to the foot. Squeeze, not hard. You just squeeze right there and just hold it. Pretty soon, he'll balance himself on his other three legs, and he'll pick that leg up. He'll just pick that foot up. It's amazing. This is all part of the gently process. Then I'll work my way to the back feet. People have always been afraid of the back feet. Well, you don't need to be if you have horses in this frame of mind. See how quiet his eyes are? You can tell the attitude. You also feel right up around the neck. When he first came in there, he was just tight and tense, and now he's just flaccid because he trusts me. Work my way back. I'm going to rub the hawk first. See him rubbing the hawk right there. You relax him, you sensitize him. And then you get him balanced on his other three legs. And then you just squeeze back there just a little bit, and he'll just pick that leg up. It's amazing what they did. It's because of trust. So then I'll usually put it on my knee. I'll put that hoof on my knee, and I'll hold it, and I'll reach back here, and I'll rub the hawk. Oh, I think that's just great. You know, we're going to walk in the park. Once we've accomplished that, and we feel pretty comfortable with that, he's still standing. He's standing within a foot and a half of where he was when we first started. Okay? He's not moving off. He's not moving off. Or I'll reach up with a closed fist. See my closed fist? And now he relates to that. And I'll stroke him. I'll stroke him down. And then I'll introduce him to the halter. I'll move the halter over there. Let him sniff it and smell it. These are very, very sensitive animals to smell. They can actually smell 40% farther than they can see. So they're looking out ahead of them, but they can see another 40% farther. So they're very sensitive to smell. So then I'll just kind of work my hand up around his top of his head and around his ears. I'll put the hauler, the hauler rope over, and then I'll pull it up, fasten it, kind of working with him so he does it when I'd like him to do it. And that's the communication part of this whole thing. Take this rope, this lead rope here, and I'm going to loop it back around his rump. I'm going to ask him to bend his neck and unseat his hindquarters. Okay, because later on when I ride I really want him to be able to We get him with those old ears up and he's focused on that totally. That's the same black that we have right here. Move it on up to the top behind his ears. I'm going to move the blanket and I'm going to move it back and forth and sensitize him to that blanket. Reach over and swing it back and forth like that. I'll just swing it back and forth and get him used to something being there because eventually I hope the stirrup's going to be there on the south. Look how quiet he is. He didn't meet this horse more than a half an hour ago. You are well married. <laughs> this is all going to happen within one hour. Now, keep in mind, this is totally foreign to it. I, I've never had anything on my back before in my life. You know, But he trusts you, and that's why he's allowing you to do this. And I'm stroking him right there. Okay? Everything's okay. Larry, now you can use yeah. your fingers up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can stroke it. You don't have to knuckle it. You don't do that. Just like the mother would. But mind, this is not normal for this horse. And, and I'm teaching him the ground tie. See what? See that collar rope there? It's down straight to the ground. And that's down straight to the ground. That horse is to respect that and stay there. I don't jerk on him. I don't pull on him. I don't tie him to the fence. I don't do any of that. I just try to have his trust. Get her in the saddle. I'll just in one fluid motion stick it up there on him. Weighs about 80 pounds, I guess, something like that. He's okay with that. I'll get the ladder going, I'll get the cinch from the other side, and I'll get the ladder going, I'll put it, the leather strap, and I'll put it down in there. And I never pull away from the horse. 
I always put my hand on the horse so he's balanced on his four legs. And then when I take up on the cinch, I push on the horse like that so he's feeling comfortable with all that.